In this video we're going to look at what happens to fluid when it flows down a pipe where we're assuming a non-ideal fluid. So first of all what do we mean by a non-ideal fluid? Well in the last few videos we've been looking at examples where we've been applying Bernoulli's equation between two points assuming no losses so that energy or the useful energy is conserved between two points. So if for example we have a tank of water with a pipe coming out the base of that tank and that tank is full of water and the water is filled to a certain height Z. What we've been saying and we did this in the first example looking at Bernoulli's equation is between point number one and point number two if we uh, set up Bernoulli's equation between point number one and point number two. At point number one all of the energy is elevation, at point number two all of the energy is kinetic energy. So we can just equate our elevation term at one to our kinetic energy term at two to work out the velocity of the fluid at two as the square root of the elevation times 2g. So the thing to realise about this solution is that what we're assuming is there's no losses in this pipe. So we're assuming that all of the energy that's elevation at z is being converted into kinetic energy at point number two in the system. So what we're effectively assuming here is that we've got an ideal fluid Whereas in reality fluids are not ideal, what we have going on in real fluids is friction and the effects of viscosity. So in reality there's going to be friction and viscosity in the fluid as it moves down this pipe and that means that not all of the energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy as it leaves the pipe. So in the next few videos we're going to be looking at how we exactly formulate this type of problem to work out how that loss in energy affects the final velocity. But in this video we're just going to think about what's happening to water as it flows down a pipe as a result of friction and viscosity. So if water starts to flow down this pipe what we can imagine is a series of water molecules across the pipe. If there's no friction or viscosity inside the pipe then all of these water molecules are just going to move down the pipe in a uniform distribution with no losses. So the velocity of each one of these particles is going to be the same across the pipe and we'd have a uniform velocity distribution. So the mean velocity would be, uh, so every particle in this pipe would have the mean velocity. In reality we have two things that means that that's not the case. We have friction at the pipe wall and we have viscosity with inside the fluid. So friction at the pipe wall, if we were able to zoom in to a microscopic level on a pipe, even if the pipe looks smooth to the eye, what we would see is that the pipe actually has a completely non-smooth surface, so the, there's all kinds of discontinuities at the microscopic level that will look something like this. So what that means is as our fluid particles try to move down the pipe. The particles that are close to the wall are getting caught up in this layer of friction so we have this friction discontinuity and our particle is trying to move into that friction. So our particle is pushing in this direction because of the uh, the energy that's trying to drive the flow but the discontinuity in the pipe wall is pushing back and trying to stop that particle of water. So what that means is we're going to get resistance to the flow. It also means that these particles of water near to the wall that are getting caught up in these discontinuities are going to be uh, moving a lot slower than the particles of water in the middle of the pipe. So the particles of water that are free from this friction will be going fast. The particles of water right at the wall will be going zero velocity and the ones somewhere in between will be going slow. So what we're going to get, if the only thing that we were worrying about was friction, we'd get a slow zone 
within the within the layer of discontinuities by the pipe wall, and we'll get a fast zone uh, in the middle of the pipe. But in actual fact, we also have one further thing to think about, which is viscosity. So viscosity, we can think about it as the internal friction inside the fluid. So as well as there being friction between the fluid and the pipe wall, there's also the same process going on between each particle of fluid. So each particle of fluid has some internal friction between each molecule of water as it travels down the pipe. So what that means is as we've got, if you think about a line of water molecules going across this pipe, it means that they're actually effectively linked. So there's going to be some translation of loss of velocity between the fast zone in the middle of the pipe and the slow zone at the wall. So actually, it's not just going to be the water particles at the wall that are slowed down, we're going to get a reduction in particles as we move away from the wall. So we're going to get some kind of profile where the particle in the middle that's furthest away from the wall is going to be going quickest, but because of the internal friction between these particles, it's going to be a gradient as we go towards the wall and eventually the the velocity of particles at the wall is going to be zero. So if we plotted that as a velocity profile, so if we plotted the velocity of fluid particles versus the pipe radius, what we would get is a distribution that looks something like this. So at the wall, the velocity of the water particles is zero, where they're right, they're caught up right in the middle of this friction. And as we move away from the wall, the velocity is going to gradually increase. So in the centre of the pipe, we have the maximum velocity because this is the point of the pipe that's least influenced by the friction at the wall. At the wall we have zero velocity, so our velocity at the wall is equal to zero. And we have a, a gradient in between the zero velocity at the wall and the maximum velocity in the middle of the pipe due to uh, the viscous forces that are translating that loss in velocity at the wall further into the pipe. And our mean velocity will actually be somewhere within the middle of this distribution, or well, somewhere along this distribution, so our mean velocity might be something like that. So in the next few videos we're going to think about exactly how this velocity profile is formed based on what the flow regime is, but for this video we're just looking at the concept that because we have friction and viscosity in a pipe, that's going to lead to zero velocity at the wall of the pipe and a reduction in velocity which slowly falls off as we get towards the centre of the pipe. And what that means is the resistance from this friction and this viscosity is going to give us a resistance to that flow that's pushing back against the flow in this direction. So this head of water is pushing water through the pipe, but we're going to have a resistance force pushing back due to this friction and this viscosity. And in later videos we're going to look at how we actually quantify that resistance within Bernoulli's equation to work out how that would affect our final velocity at point number two.